Hey everybody, it is Dak here from Feed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS Melee Gear Guide. The goal of this guide is to discuss any melee gear, both in terms of weapons and armor that you can use, generally while training your attack, strength, and defense. There's a lot of melee gear out there, so this is going to be sort of a long guide. If you're looking for something specific, I've ordered it like so. We'll start with discussing attack and strength bonuses and how those work. Then we're going to move on to weaponry, moving from lower level weapons to higher tier stuff. Afterward, I'll do armor and also go from lower to higher tier things. I'll be trying to move fairly quickly through some of it, so if you need to pause or go back, feel free to do so at any time. First, let's talk about those attack and strength bonuses. Having higher level attack and higher attack bonus from your weapon and armor increases the odds of not hitting a zero. When you attack a monster, the game first decides if you do damage or if you hit a zero. Afterwards, if it decides you do damage, then it rolls between one and whatever your max hit is to see how much damage you actually did. Having higher strength bonus is going to increase that max hit potential. There are three different attack bonuses when you look at your stats. You have slash, stab, and crush. Every weapon has a different bonus and every monster has different defense bonuses and tend to be weak to specific attacks attack styles. This means that your attack style you're supposed to be going for is going to be different in every situation obviously. For example, all dragons are weak to stab, so you want to use a stab weapon against them like a Zami Hasta or preferably the Dragon Hunter Lance. For most monsters in the game, your exact attack bonus is not extremely important compared to just making sure that you're using whatever they're weak to. Strength bonus tends to be more important for dealing as much damage as possible, especially for general training. Some bosses have very high defense levels and that makes accuracy a little bit more useful, but there are also special attack weapons that can lower the defense, so strength bonus tends to be harder to come by overall and when deciding between certain weapons and gear, the strength bonus is very important. For the gear, we're going to start with weapons, and I'll move on to armor afterwards. For just about any gear in the game, we've named a tier after whatever level you need. For example, the rune gear that I'm wearing, you consider tier 40, because the skimmy requires 40 attack, and the armor requires 40 defense. On that note, of course, we're going to start at tier 1. You can use bronze and iron gear. In the basic weapon department, the skimmy tends to be your best option, though. I am a fan of the longsword, too. You do want to lean the skimmy direction. Iron is more powerful than bronze even though that they're on the same tier. Iron items tend to have more requirements for getting them, like maybe a higher smithing level or just a little bit more money to buy it, but both an iron skimmy and bronze skimmy are super beginner level stuff, so you should just start with an iron scimitar off the bat. At level 5 you unlock steel weaponry. All of these early tiers are going to work basically the same, where the skimmy is your best option. Some of you at this point might be asking about monsters weaknesses, maybe you should be switching to a stab or a crush weapon depending on what you're fighting, but all the monsters you fight at very low levels are too weak for that to really matter. At level 10 you have black and white equipment that you can use. To use the white knight equipment you need to do the wanted quest, and they have the same stats other than a prayer bonus as black equipment, so you can just upgrade to a black skimmy at this level. Since black gear can't be smithed on an anvil, it's more expensive than the tier above, but still pretty cheap overall, but for this reason a lot of players tend to skip over tier 10. At level 20 attack you can start using myth gear, same as before you can stick with the skimmy, and those of you that have a black skimmy this is going to be a much cheaper option. At tier 30, we've got our last basic tier in my opinion, unlocking the adamant weapons. The adamant skimmy is cheaper than a black skimmy from level 10, but none of these items have over a 2-3k to 3K cost at this point, so you really shouldn't have much trouble upgrading your early game weapons. Tier 40 is the first time we actually get a little bit of decision making on your weapon choice. The easy choice is use a rune scimitar, which is pretty cheap for a rune item and overall has some solid stats for melee training, but the other option at this level is a brine saber. The saber is stronger than a rune skimmy with two higher accuracy and two higher strength bonus. The brine saber is a lot more expensive than the rune skimmy though, so a lot of players just stick with the rune. If you do have the near 200k to spend on a saber though, I would use it to speed up your XP at these levels. Tier 50 is a strange tier with no skimmy to work with. At this level you get granite weaponry, but the thing with granite weapons is you not only need 50 attack to wield them, you also need 50 strength. The three granite weapons we'll discuss are the granite maul, the granite longsword, and the granite hammer. The maul is a classic runescape weapon with highest strength bonus of the three options, and it's the cheapest of the three. The granite maul is a slow crush weapon though, and it's really only used for its special attack which can hit twice in one attack. The Dragon Dagger spec is more useful for general training, but does require 60 attack, so you could use this as your spec weapon from levels 50 to 60. The Granite Sword is overall a pretty good upgrade from the Brine Saber, and of course it's a little more expensive than the Saber, and then that Granite Hammer is your best option for Granite Weapons, but it also costs a few mil. The Granite Hammer is faster than the Granite Sword, which makes it do more damage over time, and this is the first time that you're looking at a pretty expensive weapon when you're trying to decide. It's all going to depend on your financial situation, but we're also getting the weapons that deal a lot of damage, so it's worth it to spend some money on your weapons. Also at 50 attack you can wield the Leaf Bladed Sword, but only if you also have at least 55 Slayer. The Leaf Bladed Sword is about as powerful as a Granite Hammer, and they have the same attack speed. The Hammer is a little bit higher strength, but the sword's more accurate, plus it's a stab and slash weapon compared to the Hammer being a crush weapon. The big benefit is that the Leaf Bladed Sword is cheaper than the Granite Hammer, in fact it's cheaper than the Granite Longsword, which is pretty nice. 
A tier 60 you unlock dragon weaponry. Similar to rune, addy, and myth and so on, the dragon skimmy is going to be your best option for these weapons just for general training. You do need to do monkey madness to wield the dragon skimmy, but you're going to find for most dragon items there's some sort of quest requirement. The Dragon Skimmy is a good weapon and is much cheaper than some of those granite items that we were discussing before, even cheaper than that Brine Saber from tier 40. Lots of other dragon weapons still have some use mostly because of their special attacks, unlike back in the rune tiers where the Skimmy was your best option and everything else is mostly just used for Alks. The Dragon Longsword and the Dragon Dagger are both unlocked by completing the Lost City quest. The Longsword is not extremely useful since the Skimmy is better and the special attack is not as good as the Dagger, but doing the Lost City quest is also a little bit easier than doing Monkey Madness. The Dragon Dagger has one of the most useful special attacks in the game. Each spec hits twice similar to that Granite Maul, but each special attack only used 25% of your special attack bar, so it can be used a lot during your general melee training and overall tends to be more helpful. Weapon poison could also be used on the dragon dagger to help inflict poison on a monster that you're fighting. When you complete hero's quest you unlock the ability to wield the dragon mace and the dragon battle axe. The mace special attack is not very useful but the battle axe has a unique special attack on it. The battle axe special attack is going to lower your attack, defense, range, and magic by 10% but then it will raise your strength level temporarily to similar levels of a strength potion. It's much more useful to just use like a dragon dagger and keep strength potions on you in your envy but if you're having trouble with potions this could possibly replace it. The Dragon Warhammer is a pretty expensive special attack weapon but has an awesome special attack where as long as you land the spec, it drops the target's current defense level by 30%. This is very useful for some high level bossing. The Dragon Sword doesn't really have like a super good special attack by any means, but it is a very cheap dragon weapon that requires zero quests to equip, so it can be kind of convenient for some of you who don't want to quest. At level 60 you unlock more than just dragon weapons, you can also wield obsidian weapons. You do have the Abi Maul, Sword, Dagger, and Mace to choose from. The Abi Maul only requires 60 strength, but it's mostly used for PvP since you don't need an attack level, and it hits very hard, but it's not great for regular training. The other three weapons, the Abi Sword is the best option, but the dagger is not terrible. The reason Abi weapons are good to use is because you get a bonus if you're wearing obsidian armor and or the Berserker necklace. You have to wear obsidian chest, legs, and helmet to get a 10% accuracy and strength boost from them, and if you wear the Berserker necklace it gives a 20% damage boost, and both of these boosts stack with each other so overall it makes the sword really crank. At 60 attack you can also wield the Vigora's Chain Mace. By itself it's as strong as a Dragon Skimmy, but in the Wilderness it gets a 50% accuracy and melee boost making it one of the top melee weapons in the game. It does need to be charged with Revenant Aether making it a little bit expensive to use, but it can bring some of the top notch XP rates in the game say at Chaos Druids at the Chaos Altar in Shallow Wilderness. Obviously anytime you're in the wilderness you're at risk of being PK'd too, but there has to be some risk added for such a powerful weapon. Tier 60 has a lot of choices for weapon usage, but we finally get to move on to tier 65. There's not much of this half tier, but with both 65 attack and 55 slayer, you get to wield the leaf bladed battle axe. This is an upgraded version of the leaf bladed sword, which also gives a 17.5% damage boost when you're fighting Karasks or Turoths. The leaf bladed axe is pretty cheap for how strong it is, and it has a very high strength bonus for a one handed weapon. I'm also going to throw defenders at the tier 65 area, that's because you need a combination of 130 attack and strength, and if you had 65 in both you would get 130 for you to enter the warriors guild. Once you're in the warriors guild you can do the mini games there to get up to a dragon defender. The dragon defender is the second best offensive shield in the game, if you were to buy an avernic defender hill and attach it to your dragon defender you get the best offensive shield in the game. It is highly suggested once you have 130 in your attack and strength combined you go grind out that dragon defender. At level 70 attack you unlock the Abyssal Whip which is one of the most popular weapon choices in the game. The whip has no request requirements attached to it and it's very powerful for a one handed weapon. Some shields have a pretty good attack or strength bonus like those defenders so this one handed weapon is very nice to have compared to a two handed weapon. The one downside to using a whip is that you only get strength XP through the shared XP option which means you're getting even experience to attack strength and defense. And it's not a bad way to train your melee levels but if you're trying to get more strength XP you're going to need a different weapon. Also at 70 attack you can wield the Ceredomen sword. This sword is a two handed weapon that's basically as powerful as a whip. Even though the whip plus the shield is better than a Sarah sword, the Sarah sword is a pretty cheap option that's really good for strength training. There are more abyssal weapons unlocked at tier 70 including the abyssal dagger. The dagger is a powerful one handed weapon that can be used for strength training. Because the whip is a slightly better weapon overall the dagger is a little bit more expensive. It's only used for that strength training, but it is a better option than the Sarah Sword when you combine it with a good shield. The Abyssal Dagger special attack is a stronger version of the Dragon Dagger, but it takes 50% of the attack bar, so it's not really as helpful for general training. The Abyssal Bludgeon requires both 70 attack and 70 strength to wield. This is a two-handed weapon, but it is a very strong strength weapon with the speed of a whip. The Bludgeon is fairly expensive, but if you're just looking for strength XP while training Slayer, for instance, or just strength training in general, this is one of my favorite options. 
The Zami Spear is a pretty good two-handed weapon that requires 70 attack, but the spear itself is only that useful against the Corporal Beast. If you complete your Barbarian Fishing and Smithing training, you can turn the spear into a Hosta, which is a one-handed version of the spear. The Hosta is one of the best crush and stab weapons in the game. It's not really the best in either category, but it's fairly cheap for how extremely useful it can be. If you attach a Hydra's Claw to the Zami Hosta, you get a Dragon Hunter Lance. The Lance has the same stats as the Hosta, but you also get a 20% boost in damage and accuracy when you use the Lance against Dragons. This is very helpful against Rune Dragons, Olm's Melee Claw, or even an interesting way to get some good Vorkath kills without being nearly as expensive as the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. Tier 75 is the top tier for melee weapons at the moment and has a lot of unique options. We're going to start with the Abyssal Tentacle. The tentacle is made by attaching a whip to a Kraken Tentacle. The weapon has 10,000 charges when you make it, and when it degrades down to zero, it's going to turn back into that Kraken Tentacle, and you'll need another whip to attach to it. You can combine two Abyssal Tentacles to get over 10k charges, but it will cost you an extra Kraken Tentacle in the process. This is generally used just so you don't run out of charges during a bossing trip, and you're left with just a Kraken Tentacle, which you can't use as a weapon at all. You can't get more than 20k charges on this weapon, so you can only combine two of them and you can't just keep combining more tentacles. Even though it's more expensive to use, once you're like 85 to 90 Slayer, if you're making sure that you're doing your bossing tasks and you're not skipping the solid money makers, it's going to be more than worth it to use a tentacle. Also, if you ever have like no idea what melee weapon to use on a specific boss or monster, you probably should look it up to get the best options, but in general, the Abyssal Tentacle is always going to be one of the top choices, so it's never a bad default. As we have the upgrade to a whip, we also have the upgrade to the Ceridoman Sword. Attaching a Ceridoman Sword to Ceridoman's tier works the same as the Kraken Tentacle attachment. You can't combine multiple Blessed Swords to stack charges though. This isn't a bad strength weapon, but I much prefer to use something like a Bludgeon. Also at 75 attack, you can now start wielding God Swords, which each have a unique special attack. The Bandos God Sword is going to lower your opponent's defense level based on how much damage you did, one level per damage, but if the monster you're fighting is already at zero defense and you use this spec, it's instead going to reduce their strength. This will go all the way down the line from strength to prayer, then attack, magic, and finally range. The Zami God Sword has a spec that can freeze opponents. The only spot that I've heard of this being useful at all is Sarah Doman in the God Wars dungeon, but it is a fun method to freeze Sarah. The Armadil God Sword is a very straightforward special attack. It deals an extra 37.5% more damage and it doubles the accuracy. This is mostly used for PvP as a finishing weapon. The Saradoman God Sword is the most expensive one for good reason. The special attack increases your max hit by 10% and doubles your accuracy, and then your hit points are healed 50% of however much damage you did, and it's a minimum of 10 health as long as you didn't hit a zero. It also heals your prayer points 25% of whatever you hit, with a minimum of 5, again, as long as you didn't hit a zero. This is extremely useful for general training like Slayer and even a few different bosses. The Arc Light is a special weapon that has a 70% boost in accuracy and strength against demons. This is extremely useful against bosses like Zami or the Abyssal Sire or even demonic gorillas. The Arc Light's made from using three ancient shards and a dark light, and the dark light is a reward from the Shadow of the Storm quest. You can get ancient shards as they drop from any monster in the catacombs under Zaya. You only need three shards to make the Arc Light at first, and it gives a thousand charges, and then every three more shards you add to it will give another thousand charges. The Staff of the Dead is not very commonly used as a melee weapon, but it has surprisingly high melee stats for a magic weapon. You do need 75 attack and 75 magic to wield it, it has pretty good strength bonus and the attack speed of a whip, and it's not a degradable weapon. The Elder Maul is a very rare reward from the Chambers of Zarek. The Elder Maul is a very hard hitting crush weapon, but also extremely slow. There's some niche situations that the Maul can be pretty helpful, but overall the Bludgeon tends to be a better option. There are two melee weapons that you can get as a reward from the Theater of Blood. First, we have the Grazi Rapier, which is a non-degradable stab weapon. In fact, it's the best stab weapon in the game. With the addition of the Dragon Hunter Lance, there's not as many options for the Rapier, but overall, it's still one of the most powerful non-degradable weapons in the game, being slightly stronger than the Abyssal Tentacle, which is a degradable weapon. The Scythe of Vitur is currently the most expensive weapon in the game, though I personally believe the T-Bow is going to be more expensive eventually. The Scythe is the most powerful slash weapon and can hit large targets multiple times on every attack. The Scythe has to be charged with Vials of Blood and Blood Runes, making it overall the most expensive item to use in the game. The only reason you want to use it is for high level bossing like the Theater of Blood, Bandos, Zami, and even the Grotesque Guardians are weak to slash. The Scythe is a very cool and powerful weapon, but clearly not accessible to very many people. That's all the info I was looking to give on weaponry. If you still have any questions about weapons, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Let's move on to the armor, which shouldn't be quite as extensive with the weapons, but there's some important pieces out there. At level 1 defense, you can wear bronze and iron armor. Same as with your weaponry, you should go for the iron variants. For the gloves, you do need to do parts of the recipe for disaster quest to unlock higher tier gloves. You don't actually have any defense requirements for the gloves, just whatever defense you need or you get from the quests involved. 
There are some other items that don't have any defense requirements but give good bonuses. The Amulet of Glory is a solid all around amulet that is very cheap and if you've got decent cash you can upgrade to an Amulet of Fury which has boosted stats from a glory including a nice extra prayer boost. The Arty Cloak is a reward from the Arty Diaries. As you get to higher tier diaries, you're going to find it's harder to get the cape with only one defense, but even the Easy Cloak has a stab and a prayer bonus. The Fire and Inferno Cape technically have no defense requirements, so I'll put it in this section of the guide. But to receive these capes, you have to be able to complete the Fight Caves and the Inferno, respectively, which are two of the top melee capes in the game and two of the top melee challenges in the game. So it's possible to get them at lower levels, but since they're a bit of a challenge, you're likely to not have them right at one defense. There are no requirements to wear a blessing which can go in your ammo slot. The blessing gives a plus one prayer boost unless you have the Rada's Blessing 4 which is an elite Koren Diary reward and gives you a plus two prayer boost. In your ring slot you don't have any requirements other than being able to afford the ring. The Warrior's Ring is the worst offensive ring only giving a bonus in Slash. The Berserker Ring is a better option since it gives a strength bonus which is a little bit more helpful for any Amelia attack style. You also have the Tyrannical Ring which gives a bonus in Crush similar to how the Warrior's Ring does it for Slash and a treasonous ring which gives a bonus in stab. All four of these rings can be imbued to double their stats, but overall the Berserker ring is the most useful. There's also a Brimstone Ring, which is now in the game from the new Alchemical Hydra. For melee, you're going to get all the bonuses from the rings we were talking about before, but you can't imbue the Brimstone Ring, so the imbued Berserker Ring is still going to be most helpful for your general melee training. I think we can move on to the tier 5 armor, which is Steel Armor. There's not that much different with Steel compared to Iron, you just want to replace all of your Iron pieces. At level 10 we have black and white equipment again, the defense bonus isn't that important at these low levels so it's not very important to upgrade in this section and a lot of players just skip it. Level 20 we're able to bring up mithril armor and this is a pretty simple tier again. At this point it also seems to be reasonable to bring up that combat bracelet which is the equivalent of mithril gloves but doesn't have those request requirements like the gloves do. At 30 defense we're on our way to adamant armor which is the last real basic tier here. Level 40, of course, we have rune armor that you can add in. I should mention that you do need to do the Dragon Slayer quest to wear the rune plate body. Also at 40 defense, you can wear a Fighter Torso, which is a possible reward from the Barbarian Assault minigame. The Fighter Torso has worse defense than the rune plate, but also a plus 4 strength boost, which is pretty solid for an armor piece. If you have a team of friends that can do Barbarian Assault with you, it's going to be fast to get the Fighter Torso, but even with random players, it's only like 3 or 4 hours to get your torso, and it is very worth it. At 42 defense, you can wear Void Armor. Void is a unique set of armor, and it's a reward from the Pest Control minigame. You have to have the full set, including the melee helm, to get any sort of boost from it. But with the Void melee helm, you get a 10% boost to melee accuracy and damage. It's not extremely useful for just your general training, especially if you're using a Slayer helm, which is going to be a better boost and you can't wear Void with it. But at higher levels, it can be very useful for bossing situations like raids or even corp. Tier 45 has a few unique helms that you could wear. The Warrior Helm and the Berserker Helm work very similar to the Warrior and Berserker Ring, other than the fact that you can't imbue the helms. The Berserker Helm is a better choice for melee training than the Warriors, but both of them require the Fremenic Trials quest to wear. Also at 45 defense, you can wear a regular Spirit Shield. Spirit Shields by themselves aren't great unless you bless them though, so we'll talk about them a little more later on. Tier 50 adds in Granite Armor. Most Granite Armor only adds defense, which isn't very helpful at these levels since you're not going to be doing any bossing, though the Granite Shield is a very good shield for something like low level fire cape attempts for instance. The Granite Gloves and Granite Boots do have some offensive bonuses. The Boots only have a Strength Boost, but they are an upgrade from Rune Boots overall, and the Gloves have an even higher Strength Boost and Melee Boost with them, but they're a little bit weaker than Rune Gloves if you've gotten that far in your Recipe for Disaster quest line. At 55 defense, you can wear the Helm of Natiznaat. This is actually the best melee helm in the game right now, outside of being on Slayer Task wearing a Slayer Helm. You need to complete the Pranic Isles to wear this helm, but it is very cheap. I think it's likely that the next melee update, or at least a, a monster that drops an item that's going to help melee, is going to be a helm upgrade. We are going to talk about some other helms later on, though. At level 60, you can now wear Dragon Armor. Not all Dragon Armor is really worth it compared to how much it costs, or even best in slot for its level. The Dragon Boots are a very solid upgrade and they don't require any quest to wear, plus they're far less expensive than the next boot upgrade is going to be. Dragon Plate Legs or the Plate Skirt will be a good upgrade from the Rune Counterparts, though defense is not extremely important here since you're still likely not bossing at these levels. You also unlock Obsidian Armor at level 60, which we were talking about a little bit earlier. You also have the option here to wear the Obsidian Cape, which is nice for defense, making it better than not wearing a cape at all, but I still prefer the Fire Cape, obviously, or even that Prayer Bonus from the Arty Cloak. The Obsidian Shield has a plus 5 Strength Bonus, which is pretty good for a shield, and makes it not a bad option for the next few levels. It's also not too expensive. 
At 65 defense, you can now wear Bandos gear, which is highly sought after melee gear. The chest plate has a strength boost, the same as the fighter torso, but also way better defensive stats and a plus one prayer boost. The tacits only have a plus two strength boost, but it's not terrible for some plate legs and they're arguably the best melee legs in the game. Bandos boots aren't nearly as important since they're just tank boots and that's why they're cheaper than dragon boots. The Bandos chest and tassies are pretty expensive, but for good reason, they're very good pieces of armor. At 70 defense, you can now wear Barrows gear. If you manage to get 70 attack and even strength for some of the full sets, you can wear a full set of Barrows, including the weapon that's going to give you a special bonus. There's three Barrows sets that can be pretty useful for melee. Darox armor with the full set gives you a boost in strength for every hit point that you're missing. This means if you have like 90 plus HP and you're sitting at only one health, you can hit ridiculously high. This is nice for some niche bossing situations and provides some of the best XP rates in the game, especially at the Nightmare Zone. Fogothans has a similar effect to the Ceridome and Godsword spec. Every time you do damage, there's a 1 in 4 chance that you heal the exact same amount of damage that you did. This is very helpful for just regular Slayer training and many bossing situations like Bandos and Zami. Full Varix is useful for some bossing situations like the Calphite Queen. When you're wearing a full set, there's a 25% chance to ignore the opponent's armor, defense level, and protection prayer, and it's impossible to hit a zero on those hits. It's a pretty niche weapon for higher level monsters with high defense, and it even has a small place in PvP. At 70 defense, you can also wear a Crystal Shield, which is a reward from the Roving Elves quest. You do need 50 agility too to wear this shield. It's a very solid piece of tank gear and can be helpful for learning some bosses like Bandos. You can also wear that Blessed Spirit Shield, which is a little bit better of a tank shield than Crystal Shield, but it requires 60 prayer instead of 50 agility. This shield is fairly cheap for having pretty good defensive stats. At 75 defense, you do unlock some really solid gear. I'm going to start with the Primordial Boots, which are the best melee boots in the game. You also need 75 strength to put these boots on. They're far more expensive than Dragon Boots, but if you have enough money to get them, they are very worth it. The Serpentine Helm is also tier 75 and has a unique effect where you can't be afflicted with Venom or Poison while you wear it. Also, the monster you're attacking has a chance to be inflicted with Venom, and you have a higher chance of inflicting Venom if you're using a Poison weapon over just a regular weapon, and even a 100% chance you do it if you're using a weapon that can inflict Venom already, like a Blowpipe or the Trident of the Swamp. This Helm does need to be charged with Zulra's Scales, which makes it expensive to use, and it has the same Strength bonus as the Helm of Nata's Knot and no Prayer bonus, so it's often not used. The Dragonfire Shield will work for your fire protection, like an anti-dragon shield, but it also has higher defense and a good strength bonus. It has a special attack that allows you to charge it with Dragon's Fire and then release the fire like an attack, but a fully charged shield has better stats, so most people just charge it up and use the shield like that. This shield is only extremely useful for like fighting dragons. For the most part, having a Dragon Defender is a better option. You can also use the Spectral, the Arcane, and the Elysian Spirit Shield at level 75 defense and some other requirements. The Spectral Spirit Shield has very high magic defense along with some normal solid defense that a Spirit Shield normally gives. The Spectral is not a very universally useful thing, but it does cut the Prayer Drain from Cerberus' special attack in half, which by itself is like the only reason that fight is bearable, and the Primordial Boots aren't like 50 mil plus. The Spectral Spirit Shield also requires 70 Prayer and 65 magic to wield. The Arcane Spirit Shield has the best mage boost in the game, which makes it not that helpful for melee, so we're going to move on quickly. The Elijah Spirit Shield is by far the best tank shield in the game. The shield has a passive effect that gives you a 70% chance of reducing the damage you receive by 25%. This shield is hard to achieve through a drop, and it's very powerful, making it one of the most expensive items in the game, and not really used that much for just regular training. You do need 75 prayer along with your 75 defense to wield the Elijah Spirit Shield. On the note of tank gear, we have the Justiceure Armor. This is the best tank gear in the game. Not only does each piece have insane bonuses, but with the full set, you get an extra effect that reduces the damage you take based off of your defense bonuses. This gear is not widely useful since offensive gear tends to be better than defensive, but it's still very powerful armor for some tank situations, especially if you're going on group bossing trips and one of you tends to be the tank. It's nice if that person's wearing Justiceure. Here's a unique tier 75 item. This doesn't take 75 defense. In fact, you need 75 hit points to wear the Amulet of Torture. This is the best in slot melee amulet in the game. It doesn't have the defense or the prayer bonuses of the Fury, but it's still going to boost your XP rates in the long run and is very worth having for training your melee stats. For the final tier, and if I'm not mistaken, the only tier 80 item we currently have in the game, the Ferocious Gloves. These gloves are the best in slot melee gloves at the moment and require 80 defense and attack to put on. They have no defensive bonuses, and they don't have range or mage boost like the Barrow's Gloves, but they're very helpful for some melee-only bosses and grinds in general. 
I believe that is all of the information I wanted to give about melee gear. This was a pretty long guide, but there's a lot of melee gear in the game. So hopefully if you were looking for a specific item, you got the information you wanted on it. Or if you were just looking for some information about melee gear in general, if you got that useful information or you enjoyed the video in general, I would appreciate it if you drop a like and sub for some more content. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions about melee gear, be sure to leave them in the comments section below or even some tips of your own since we're all looking for some more information on this topic. That's the reason why we're on this video. So thanks again for watching everybody and best of luck with your upcoming melee grind.